Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Professor Sides and this course is Principles of Microeconomics, Chapter 7, Consumers, Producers, and the Efficiency of Markets. We are going to round out this chapter with this segment of the lecture and we're going to pull everything together. We're going to um, speak to consumer surplus, producer surplus, what happens when we pull those two together to determine whether or not a market is efficient, which is the crux of welfare economics. When we talk about um, consumer surplus, remember from our previous lecture, consumer surplus is the value um, that or satisfaction that buyers receive. It is what uh, their willingness to pay minus what they actually pay for a good or a service. And that producer surplus is the value that is received by the seller. It is the cost to produce and sell a good or service minus the actual sales price. And when we put both the consumer price, uh, consumer surplus, excuse me, and the producer surplus together, we come up with total surplus. Again, total surplus is consumer surplus plus producer surplus. And from that, we derive the total value of the market. So when we look at uh, welfare economics and we look at whether or not the consumer and the producer benefits from participating in the market, we need only look at what the total surplus is and or look at what cons its parts, consumer surplus and producer surplus is in order to, to derive whether or not there was any gains. Once we understand total surplus, which is consumer, and pro consumer surplus plus producer surplus, we now can analyze the market. There are two types of analysis that is done in welfare economics or just in economics in general. The first type is called positive economics, which is to say what it is. And we use the total surplus to measure. So when we're analyzing economics or welfare economics, we're going to look at what it is actually, and that is total surplus. So what it is, when we talk about market efficiency or allocation of resources, what we're going to say is what it is, is total surplus. It is consumer surplus plus producer surplus. The second type of analysis is what we call normative economics or normative analysis. And that means what it should be. So basically what we talk about in economics is what it is and what it should be. What it is is more quantitative and normative or what it should be is more qualitative. And the analysis takes place when we compare the positive, what it is, against the normative, what it should be. This causes us to ask a, a more probing question, which is, how efficient is the market at allocating its resources? The standard that we use to answer that question, how efficient is the market at allocating its resources, is, what, um, is the purpose of total surplus. Um, whether what we look at, the answer is was the um, total surplus maximized? Do we have maximum total surplus? Do we, do we have maximum producer surplus, maximum consumer surplus? If we do, if total surplus is maximized, then the market efficiently allocated the resources, its resources for that market. Graphically, total surplus is the highlighted area that's um, under the red, in the red triangle. That's what we, um, that is the total, the highlighted area on the market diagram. Again, remember, this is our market diagram, supply, demand. And so when we add consumer surplus and we add producer surplus, that's our total surplus. 
and we evaluate this by stating we can conclude evaluate by forming a conclusion that the equilibrium price and quantity in this example equilibrium price is 30 and quantity is 15 that when the market reached equilibrium then we could say that total surplus has been achieved so if we looked at this and said did the market allocate its efficiently allocate its resources we need only say that in this area in this highlighted area yes in at any point or any area other than the highlighted area no so at this in this range yes total um, surplus or the market max um, efficiently uh, allocated its resources but if we're outside of that then no it did not and then again, the invisible hand would move in the form of market pricing in a way that we would get, we would move towards total surplus. This concludes our lecture series for chapter seven. I look forward to discussing the concepts with you in class. Have a good day.